Moving on to our next story, Lebanese sources say that security forces have killed two ISIL members, including a senior commander of the terrorist group in the north of the country. Uh, they were killed in an army operation in the region of Arsal on the Syrian border. The Lebanese sources have named the slain ISIL commander as Naif al shalan saying he was also known as Abu Foz. According to the Lebanese uh, media, a number of ISIL terrorists were captured during the pre-planned attack to kill Shalan. Weapons from the Takfidi militants were also seized. Lebanon has been hit by the spillover of fighting uh, in neighboring Syria. Lebanese troops frequently launch preemptive strikes against ISIL and Al-Qaeda linked on Nusra Front terrorists based in our Sol region. Publisher and editor of Politics First, Marcus uh, Papadopoulos, joins us now also from the British capital, London. Sir, welcome to the program. The Lebanese uh, security forces have dealt ISIL a severe blow uh, in that region. Tell us more, please. Well, the killing of that ISIS commander by the Lebanese army is certainly very good news. It should be welcomed by all governments across the world who are genuinely um, committed to fight in ISIS. And of course, one of the ways that ISIS can be defeated in the long run is by decapitating its leadership. And um, I think praise should be, uh, should be afforded to the Lebanese government and to the Lebanese military, because they certainly um, have been pulling their weight um, in the fight against ISIS and the other Islamist terrorist groups operating um, in Syria, for example, Al Nusra, and I think in the last year or so, um, uh, the Syrian army, in um, in, in uh, combined with Hezbollah, um, uh, has been um, uh, steadily eradicating the presence of uh, Islamist fighters, ISIS and Al Nusra, etc., on the Lebanese border, and on the uh, on and on Lebanon's side of the Lebanese Syrian border, the Lebanese um, army has been doing the same. So um, Lebanon should be, should be praised for its role. And it's, uh, it's a shame that uh, other countries which border um, uh, Syria, Turkey and Jordan um, uh, are not replicating what Lebanon is doing. Far from it, Turkey and Jordan, especially the former, Turkey, um, have allowed their borders um, uh, to be um, to act as a doorway into Syria for Islamist fighters and jihadists. And uh, the world knows, despite, um, despite silence from Western politicians and Western journalists, the world knows um, that Turkey and uh, Jordan, but once again, as I said, especially Turkey, um, uh, I, I, I have so much responsibility uh, for the conflict in Syria. They are up to their necks in blood. Mr. Papadopoulos, so you're saying that uh, the Lebanese security forces alongside uh, Hezbollah have held their own uh, quite uh, adequately in uh, 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 rather uh, against the uh, spillover of the Syrian conflict into their own borders? Yes, I do. Um, you know, Lebanon, of course, is a very, um, is a very delicate country. Um, it's made up of numerous ethnic groups, numerous religious groups. And it has felt um, the, uh, the impact of the conflict in Syria. And I think um, that, uh, the, you know, the Lebanese army, along with Hezbollah, um, uh, are determined not to allow um, Islamist terrorists who are being backed by the West, backed by Turkey, backed by Saudi Arabia and backed by Qatar, they're determined not to allow these wretched people to have a presence um, in Lebanon. And so they are doing an, admir an admirable job in, um, in helping, in trying to seal off um, uh, the border with Syria so that uh, Islamist fighters and jihadists are not able to cross into Syria. All right, thank you very much. Published and editor of Politics First, Mr. Marcus Papadopoulos, joining us from the British capital, London.